Hello everybody and welcome back to Broken Brian. And here's some news I did not expect. There is going to be a Game of Thrones movie that is going to follow the Song of Fire and Ice storyline. So it's going to be somewhere in the original Game of Thrones series line of characters, somewhere around there. We don't know what it is. We just know that it's coming. It was just announced. And here's the thing. I didn't get until Game of Thrones till after it all aired. Like, it was just, I didn't have HBO, and I slowly bought the seasons over time. And I'm with everybody, and I thought season eight was... It felt rushed, and it felt like they weren't sure what they are were doing, because honestly, they didn't, because... George R.R. R. Martin still has not finished the series. Uh, it's been years. Let's see what. It ended in 2019, I think. Yeah. 2019. He wasn't finished with the last book then. So it's been at least six years, seven years probably, maybe even eight, that we have not gotten the final book from George R.R. R. Martin. I have a sneaky suspicion we're not going to get it. He's just not going to finish it. He's just not. I, I That's my suspicion, but and there are a lot of people out there like, oh, he's doing all these other projects. Well, finish the one and move on to the next. But, you know, I'm ADD, and I get it. Sometimes finishing a project motivates you to do other things, and sometimes not finishing a project motivates you to do other things. So, I know that makes no sense, but that's like an ADD mind, and I get it. But, when you have an entire fandom being like, come on, finish it. And I think at this point, he's not going to finish it because it'll, it'll paint the final season of Game of Thrones in an even worse light. I do think Bran probably was the original intended... Spoilers, sorry. If you haven't watched it by now, sorry. Uh, was supposed to be the new king all along. I do think that was his original plan, but the whole season was just, oh, it just felt so weird compared to the others. And then came, then came House of the Dragon. Now, this is a phenomenal series, despite some weird incestuous stuff. Um... But I do like House of the Dragon. It is good. It is, it's a return to form for Game of Thrones. But with this movie, it's going to be divisive. Because, yes, a lot of goodwill has been placed into the Game of Thrones franchise because of House of the Dragon. We're like, oh, okay, you can, you can do good. And... This is taking place, I forget which book House of the Dragon is from, but they seem to be following it very well. And there's an ending to the story that's already been written, so there's no no likelihood of a terrible finale season. But with a movie returning back to the original aired story, that's going to leave a lot of bad taste in some people's mouth still. It just is. It's going to be... Some people will be like, okay, well, they learned their lesson. We'll give it a chance. And other people are just going to be like, no, absolutely not. Because of what they did in that finale season. So I have a suspicion. And here's my thoughts. My suspicion is this. That the movie, when released which I'm assuming is going to be on Max and Max only, is going to do okay. It's going to get good numbers. It's not going to get great numbers. It's going to get good numbers because of this divide between fans, you know? Okay, yeah, don't go back there. You, you really messed it up. Just leave it alone. Do not beat the dead horse. Okay, we're done. It's over. You finished it. Please don't take us back. Then you'll have others that be like, okay, 
we got to give it a chance. Now, if they do do something that HBO has not done in a very long time and release it to theaters, I do think the hype will boost. But I don't think that's going to be their move. I really don't. I do think they would do better monetarily, financially, if they did do a theater release, but I just don't think they're going to do it. Because, honestly, if it's less than two hours, most people of Game of Thrones are going to be like, that's it? I mean, when, you, when you're used to hour-long episodes, if the movie isn't at least two hours, it's going to feel like, eh. But most movies are about 90 minutes, give or take. And it bounces around. That's kind of the median average. And yes, there's much longer movies. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they got to go like Lord of the Rings extended edition time. Like three hours plus. They really do. I think they do to tie in gracefully into the original storyline. And to do whatever they're planning on doing. And to give it that flushed out feeling. But, I'm one of those skeptics. I'm like, if they said, we're going to do an hour-long movie based on another storyline within the book book series, okay. But whatever they're doing here, I just don't feel good about. And here's, a, here's one of the major problems. To tie into the universe in the original storyline... You're going to have to have at least a handful of actors and actresses return, no matter where they put it. All these actors and actresses have gone on. It's been five years. They're doing other things. And we've seen projects that are like, oh, we're trying to get this, we're going to do this movie, and we're going to get it together, and we've got everyone signed on, except for like two people, and it's going to be great. And those two people never actually sign on, and then more people drop out and those two that couldn't sign on come back in and now they're trying to get and it's just it's like herding cats because everyone's doing their own thing now they're they've moved on in their career to do other things i mean what's it been i don't know a decade or so and we're still waiting on that community movie <laughs> i mean that they've been promising us a community movie for almost a decade it feels like I don't know when it ended. I can't even remember when it ended, but gosh, it feels like every time it's like, oh, you, you'll hear something every now and then. Oh, we've got to, you know, it's like they got everybody except uh, Glover. And he, he's like, okay, but we're not, he can't do it. Well, now he can't, but now others can't. Like Josh McHale can't because he's now he's doing this series on some station in Hulu that no one's watching that animal control show. Uh, which only made like three episodes in. It was, it just got boring. It felt like, oh, it's like worst community. I mean, he's playing the exact same character, but I mean, I digress. So getting people like that is, is going to be one of the major problems. So depending on where you pick it, you got to, they have to start promising the world to some of these actors and actresses that need to be there to, guide into the story that they plan on telling because I mean I don't know who who they're going to get where it's going to be but I mean if it's a prequel I mean that may be easier if it's a somewhere within the storyline but the problem is is going to be getting actors and actresses that need are needed for the tie-in that's going to be their issue that's that's the problem I see. That's the big hurdle I see. And you see it all the time. But will it be good or will it not? That's the question. And I put it to you, like I said previously, that it could be good. I think it'll do good numbers because of House of the Dragon. But because it's been so divisive, if, if they could leak a little more information. Like, honestly... I'm done with Jon Snow, you know, I mean, when they brought him, they brought him back to basically do nothing. Oh, we killed the character. Oh, we got to bring him back. Everyone's mad about it. But he was, he, he, his character really wasn't very pivotal 
after his resurrection. I mean, yeah, you can argue I'm wrong, and that's okay. But when I just, I watched it through once, just once, and I was like, okay, hmm, I don't know. If we did something that tied into one of the other lands that we didn't see, uh, I forget wherever the Lannister girls were sent to to be married off where, uh, what's his name, played the Mandalorian, I forget his name now, was from, you know, that land or something like that. That might be interesting. We didn't really get to see that land much. We saw glimpses here and there, little flashbacks, you know, something like that. Okay, I can kind of see that, but is that worthy of a whole movie? I don't know. Honestly, the only way to get me to watch it within the movie releasing immediately is one thing and one thing alone. And that's to do a story around Natalie Dormer. <laughs> that's how you're going to get me back. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. I was like, oh... When they killed her off, I was so sad. And I was like, oh, I like Natalie. If you haven't seen her and other things, she's a phenomenal actress. Her fa My favorite role of her is when she plays Moriarty in Sher Sherlock. Is it Sherlock? Yeah, Sherlock with uh, Johnny Lee. She did phenomenal in that. Because she, she played good and bad both sides. It was so, she, That is just a testament to her acting ability. She is great great and so like when i saw her in that and then i was like oh well she's in game of thrones well i'll give it a chance you know and she did phenomenal in game of thrones but she's she's one of my favorite actresses everything she's in and i've just loved and i haven't seen all her stuff of course but i mean everything i've seen her in she was just so good in sherlock so no not sherlock elementary i'm sorry elementary it wasn't sherlock it was elementary there's so many Sherlock Holmes stuff. I just watch it. Elementary. With Johnny Lee. And and Lucy Liu. So good. So good. Because you saw her play this good character. Then come out and she's this dark evil character. It was wonderful. So I do love her as an actress. And she's easy on the eyes. Let's be honest. But she was phenomenal. And that's one of the characters that I was mad. You know, that's that was Game of Thrones. You start to fall in love with a character, and then, boom, they're gone. Boom, they're gone. Boom, they're gone. I mean, it was just left and right. But that was Game of Thrones. You got invested in these characters, and then, poof, okay, now where are we going? Ooh, I really like the... Oh, man, now they're gone, too. So it was kind of a emotional roller coaster through the series, and I like that. I don't know if you can produce something like that well that Game of Thrones is really known for is getting us invested in characters in a movie. You can. Absolutely you can. But in the style of Game of Thrones, it's going to be hard. It's hard to get emotionally invested in someone in under 30 minutes. But you can. It's done all the time. But the way they do it is just a little bit odd and a little different. That's my take. So, that's what I'm sticking with. I think it'll do good. I don't think it'll do great. But we'll just have to see when it comes out. And who knows, it's announced. We may not see it for several years. And because of that, we, we may have, they may have built up some more goodwill with House of the Dragon. Maybe. Fingers crossed that they do. And they keep House of the Dragon doing good. But in the end... Time will tell. So, until next time, my friends, as always, I love you all, and there's nothing you can do about it.